Hey, what's up, ladies and gentle tubers? My name is Tyler. Welcome back to the Everide channel, where today we're obviously going to be talking about boots, specifically some of the boots that I really, really like and recommend, and some of the styles of boots and general types of boots that I suggest that nobody ever wear when riding off-road, uh, and I've actually banned them from being used on the rallies that I host here in Southern Utah. Okay, guys, so we're gonna start with a couple of boots uh, that you're probably familiar with. Um, obviously, over on this side, we have the hiking boot, just a standard combat style hiking boot. We've got the standard road riding boot, and these are actually quite nice. Uh, however, for off-road use, I would not use them. Uh, and then we've got a really quite cheap and affordable, this is an O'Neill rider boot, which can be had just about anywhere for around $100. Next, we have a very, very heavy and very armored boot, which is gonna make things really hard to shift, but at the same time, it's gonna offer a ton of protection and has a couple extra little features that you might like. Then we have kind of this adventure boot, which is kind of like a hybrid between these two and these two, where it looks quite armored, it looks pretty robust, uh, but we'll talk about some of the cons of this boot very soon. All right, guys, we've got the hat camera on for a nice first person perspective and so you can get really up close and personal with these type of boots. These are the XPD boots. Um, these were sent to me. They're very, very nice boots. They're extremely comfortable for on-road riding. If you're riding, uh, you know, a, a sport bike or just sticking on-road, these are actually gonna be really comfortable and they're very, very nice. And they do have uh, a, a little bit of armor. However, I've had people wear boots like this uh, a long time ago on my tours, on my rallies, and you know what? They've broken their legs. Uh, it's not like if you wear this boot, you're just, you know, your leg's just gonna snap in half. However, uh, the lack of armor on a boot like this is going to um, affect, affect that, right? Um, so this is not recommended for off-road use. However, on-road, it is pretty nice. This is my hiking boot. And as you can see, I actually have used this for dirt riding, and I actually haven't used it uh, for dirt riding for years and years and years. Now, let me tell you the reason why. Uh, I was in Moab riding my DRZ400 for the very first time. It was back when it was still yellow. This is before Mr. Duff Factor got a hold of it. And I had just picked up a pair of boots that were very similar to this. Uh, they were actually, instead of flies, they were ox tars. They were a lot the same as this, and I picked them up at a thrift store for, I think, like $15. And I was looking at my boots, and man, this is so much lighter, and I know these are so much more comfortable to wear around and to walk in and hike in, and I just kind of had a feeling, ah, you know what? Wear the new thrift store boots, even though they're so much more uncomfortable, and they were actually not the correct size. The funny thing is, is now I buy all of my boots in not the correct size. I actually buy them a size or two larger uh, because now I'm used to it. And because, you know, if something comes and hits your toe or something, there's a little bit of wiggle room for your foot to shift before it actually pounds into the uh, side of the boot uh, or, the, or the top here. Um, also, I wear full knee braces and they tend to fit just a little bit better in the larger size boots. So I just got used to larger boots. Anyway, as I was riding, I'm so glad that I went with the full armored boots. Um, that are, these are just like invincible. Crush protection all around, uh, clear up here onto the calf, uh, really good shin protection all around. I've worn these for a long time and I've never hurt my foot or my leg, including that day. What happened was I went uh, through this obstacle called the hot tub and I crashed at the top. I actually didn't make it to the top, I ran out of speed and the bike fell over and rode my leg down uh, on the swing arm. And you know how it is on sandstone, like in Moab. It, the bike is right here, my leg's right here, and it just kind of did ch -ch 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 -ch, like that. Just jackhammered my leg as it, as it slid down this hill, and I slid with the bike. And I, I remember sliding on the sandstone thinking, that's it, my leg is crushed in you know, 50 pieces. And I got to the bottom and kind of waited for the adrenaline to wear off, my leg was absolutely fine. I'm positive that if I had worn something like this, or like this, or even like this, uh, my leg would have been broken in several places because it was just that jackhammer as the bike slid down. So this is the boot that I recommend. Even though it's quite heavy um, and quite cumbersome, it's a little hard to shift in, but it's armored to the gills. And uh, it's, 
it's something that I'd recommend. If you can find a boot with kind of an inner booty, I, I really like the booty here. Um, it adds just a little bit of extra protection, just a little bit of padding around your ankles and things like that. It makes the inside of this boot just a hair more comfortable. Um, and then it does have kind of a, like a sole on it, you know, it's not the hardest of materials. But when I'm done riding or when I'm getting ready to ride, I don't have to put on my full boot yet. I can just wear these booties around in the dirt a little bit. They kind of, you know, I can step on rocks and stuff and not have it be painful. And then when I'm ready to ride, uh, I just wipe off the bottom and put, put my foot in my boot and it's just in there. It feels really good. I would not recommend wearing hiking boots uh, to ride in. They are convenient. They are quite nice. But as you can see, there's no... You know, there's no protection uh, from any of that. Another thing you're going to see on a lot of these boots is they don't have a hard sole. And a hard sole is something you're absolutely going to want. And here's why. Uh, let's say your motorcycle peg is a nice big one and it's about three fingers wide and about that long, right? That is going to be really actually narrow when you're putting uh, your feet on the pegs. And, it, and the place where you're supposed to be putting your feet on the pegs is on the balls of your feet right here. And as you're doing that, these boots are gonna have a tendency to warp down. And if you're putting the arch of your foot on the peg, like you're not really supposed to do, but if you're, if you're riding more comfortably, that's totally fine. And that is going to bend over that. And then the funny thing is, is as you can see, that it's going to hurt your foot over time. And then another thing is, is as your boot flexes, it's actually pulling other parts of your boot down and so you'll have hot spots on your toes. Uh, so first of all, ride on the balls of your feet when you're riding aggressively. And second of all, get a nice solid sole. These actually have quite a solid sole. I can't really bend anything there, that's a good thing. Uh, these, you know, it's no surprise that there's no bend in there at all. Uh, I don't even need to pick those up. Those are invincible, but these actually um, will bend quite a bit and you can see there You know, I can just do it with my hand with a small bit of pressure You can see that the sole bends so you don't want a lot of bending sole. It's gonna hurt your uh, Arch it's gonna hurt your insole and it's gonna be really you know It's funny because these are made to be comfortable boots and you'd imagine that these would be very comfortable but when you're on the pegs like you're supposed to be, these and these actually become really quite uncomfortable. So, you know, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of comfort for walking with comfort on the bike. And what are you going to be doing in these boots mainly? Well, let's hope you're not going to be walking. Let's hope you're riding a reliable bike and you don't have to walk home. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on to the uh, O'Neill Rider boots. Now, these are about 100 bucks, and... Honestly, I didn't have high hopes for these. I'd heard good things, I'd seen good reviews, but I didn't believe the hype for myself. And these boots are about three years old, I'm guessing. And you can see I've used them quite a lot. And uh, you know what? They actually still look pretty nice. I'm sure if I washed them off, they'd look better. But they look pretty nice. They've held up pretty well. They have had uh, a couple of buckles snap. And that's because on these um, less expensive style boots, uh, and these use the same type of buckles, almost exactly, uh, you can see they've just got kind of a small, a small uh, attachment point there. And so, oh, not the best hardware as you can see, but that's where they're saving their money. The buckles tend to snap right there, but uh, these buckles are replaceable, I believe. Now they do have kind of like this bolt-in style thing going on down in here where you can see, you know, their their screws that actually go into the boot and attach. Um, now what's happened on this one that makes it really kind of irritating is one of this one of those little screws has backed out. And you can't feel where it is. Obviously that would hurt really bad if they made boots like that. But one of the one of the screws has backed out. And so when you're trying to buckle this, uh, you pull it back and obviously it separates from the boot right there. And so this is basically worthless. You really have to like, you know, try to hold it down somehow to try to get it to buckle. So that's where they're saving some money on these adventure boots and on the, you know, the O'Neill rider boots, kind of the more budget boots. Um, when you look at the buckles on say these, you know, these fly uh, TCX boots, the buckles are a lot more like robust and just kind of higher quality. 
um, almost like something you'd see on, a, on an expensive ski boot. You can see there's just one bolt, but really where they're going into, um, this is a huge armored piece. That's not gonna go anywhere. And buckling these is really easy, and it stays secure, and they're easy to pop on and off. Um, good hardware actually goes quite a long way on boots. Uh, as you can see, you know, something like this, you're gonna try to unbuckle it, and if there's not an armor piece there, it's gonna be uh, kind of flexing into your, into your shin there. Um, it's not the worst thing, but at the same time, uh, you can pay a little more. Uh, in this case, it was quite a lot more to have a much, much better, you know, buckling system. And I hate to admit it, but sometimes my frail little computer, you know, editing hands, <laughs> they will, uh, I'll actually hurt my fingers or fingernails uh, with buckles like this. So I, I do tend to stick with the uh, more kind of robust boots. All right, so the next one we're looking at is, uh, you know, kind of more the adventure style boot. And these have gotten really popular. There's a lot of these out there. They're all pretty similar um, in that, you know, they have kind of this leather look. And one of the reasons why I bought them is because they looked really good and they looked really comfortable. The soles have actually stayed together a lot better than I thought they have. Um, however, they do have that flex and that's just not not the best, you know, kind of protection for your foot. Uh, and also, again, it gets uncomfortable when you're standing on your pegs a lot. As you can see, these don't actually look very good for very long. <laughs> they kind of look, well, they don't kind of look trash, they just do. They get trash, they look pretty bad after you've been wearing them for a while. Whereas something hard and plastic like this, and I've probably worn this boot probably five times more than either of these two boots. Um, these are my go-to boots, and they're just so much more solid and robust. Um, really, paying money for good boots to protect your feet and your shins and your ankles is is money that's really well spent in my opinion. And so if you're if you're still kind of a bargain bin guy, these boots are going to work pretty good. Um, but if you can, that you know, hundred dollars about the regular price for these boots. If you can find some really good heavily armored boots on clearance or you know on a closeout deal or whatever, um, the benefits of this one over this one, even though the weight is substantially more, um, I would rather be wearing this than any of these other ones any day of the week for for any reason. In fact, I wear these on my big adventure rides just because they're broken and they're comfortable now. This boot, for walking around comfort, it's not too bad. It still has some armor right in here um, that, you know, it adds a little bit of that crush protection, but realistically, I mean, this boot is just as wobbly and frankly, I'll say it, just as worthless as like a hiking boot. And this road boot actually feels more armored than this uh, adventure boot. So the adventure boot, I, I couldn't really recommend this. Even if you're, you know, you're like, hey, I ride mostly on the road and everything, you know, I would still go with something with a little bit of armor. If you're off-road at all, all it takes is riding around a corner and just slipping out a little bit and dabbing that foot one time for this to become 100% worth it for the ankle protection and that added support and just all this armor right here that's never going to give unless it's a really hard crash. I just, I just really feel like you should go with the most armored boot you can get, especially where you know you you flex your leg this way or. This is just a wobbly mess waiting to happen, so I really wouldn't recommend this boot um, Just as much as I wouldn't recommend a hiking boot um, Now one of the boots that I don't have here, which I really honestly think is just an abomination Nobody should buy them if you have them. I would throw them away. Don't give them away to your thrift store Don't give them away to your friends. Don't try to sell them on eBay are the half boots. Uh, they're basically an armored boot, but they only go up about this high. So you're getting protection from right here, but I've seen, again, too many broken legs from right there up because <laughs> that's not where your protection can end. Absolutely, I just would say do not buy, do not waste your time with those half boots or those shorty boots. I would not recommend a shorty boot for any off-road riding ever. So with that said, let's go ahead and weigh these boots. Okay, let's start with the MSR boot. Uh, this is the standard kind of adventure boot. And again, these look really good. They do seem like a pretty good value, 
but would I recommend the adventure style kind of leather boot overall um, you know with the soft leather going around and the soft sole and the lack of you know really substantial armor throughout no I wouldn't recommend this boot let's see how much it weighs three pounds three ounces so that's not too bad let's go for the behemoth here and we'll have to add the booty as well don't forget to add the booty Woo! five pounds three ounces so this is a good two pounds heavier this is basically like two of those boots almost let's see how much the o'neill weighs and this is kind of a medium this is going to be in the middle of these two boots we've got about three pounds nine ounces so um just not too much heavier than the msr but so much more protection you can see that crush protection there um the he this boot's not gonna flex as much as that other boot uh, especially backwards side to side you're fairly well protected um, you have to get give a pretty good amount of uh, force to get it to bend. Right here, I can get bend it pretty good, but um, really, there's lots of armor here over the buckle there. There's lots of armor. You know, there's a good steel toe. It's got this um, steel thing on the front. This is going to be a protective boot with a hard sole for not a lot of money. And honestly, for the money, this is an awesome value. Um, if you can, I'd get this. But this is still a great value. If you've if you've only got a hundred bucks to spend on boots definitely go for something like this. Let's check out the uh, XPD boots. These are more the road riding boots. 1.11 pounds, uh, lightest by far so far. And these actually have like really quite good armor. You can still bend things around uh, and the sole, oh, it looks, looks like the sole will bend quite a bit upwards. Um, so these aren't gonna be protective. Uh, these boots wouldn't be allowed on my rallies. Uh, and then the good old hiking boot, 1.21 pounds. So, um, and again, obviously, this is just going to be your very most basic. <laughs> Don't wear these to ride off-road. I know it's tempting. I know they seem like there's more protection, you know, than a tennis shoe, and you're right. But my goodness, guys, just protect your feet. I've seen too many broken legs in boots like these and boots like these. Get something that goes up almost to your knee, get something that's nice and high, that has a lot of armor, and you will not regret it when you put your foot down to dab uh, or when you're just getting into the gnarly stuff. So you guys, that is it for the boots. Uh, I do not recommend at all wearing hiking boots or combat boots on any uh, off-road motorcycle ride. Road boots I'd also avoid. Um, there's just not enough crush protection and not enough kind of movement protection or protection from a foot peg if that comes into your leg. Um, these are surprisingly good for the money. They're fairly lightweight. They're comfortable. Uh, they've got plenty of armor. And for around $100, honestly, I don't know if you can beat this. If you've got a little extra to spend, I would actually get the stiffer, heavier, vastly superior when it comes to armored boots. Uh, when you first put on a boot like this, or even like this, you're gonna complain. You're gonna be like, wow, this is uncomfortable. It's heavy, it's squeaky, it, it, I can't shift in this boot. But realistically, get used to it because I would rather be not able to shift for a couple of weeks while getting used to these boots than not being able to shift with a broken leg with these boots. Uh, and the same kind of goes for this boot. Um, you know, it, in the beginning, it looked really good. It looked really classy, but after riding with it for a while, it's really beat up. It's really quite trash. The footbed isn't quite what you want it to be when it's on those pegs because it rounds over the pegs. Uh, and then the lack of armor and just kind of the cheapness of some of the build, um, I just wouldn't recommend these. So any boot that looks like this, but cuts off about here, don't even bother with it throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Don't sell it to some other sucker. Get rid of them. They're terrible. Uh, but anyway, that is my recommended boots, guys. Thank you so much for watching and much love. Ever ride out.